Hello! Greetings. Alright, so I'm just getting my inline um, headphone volume adjusted. So it looks like yours is in a good spot. Alright. And that looks a little weird on camera, but uh, we're, we're kind of at a weird angle. Maybe I'm going to move this back and angle it a little bit. Don't let me. This ball mount doesn't really want to go up any more than it already is. So we'll just move that forward and we'll deal, it, deal with that angle. I thought I, would, I could go ahead and have the camera kind of run parallel to uh, my work surface. My work surface is on an angle, which you can see the top is wider here and more narrow down here. So you can kind of see the perspective going on. But anyways, all right. It will be just another moment and then my gold frame will pull away. One of these days I will go, well, honestly, I, I probably won't go in and make it smoother for this month because this month's already halfway over. And besides I'm not, I don't know, I'm, I'm currently keeping the mermaid frame for the moment, but I'm I'm going to figure out what what's going to be the next frame because for me that's that's a fun thing to design. All right, so right now I'm just grabbing my Southworth resume paper on percent cotton, and this is a surface that I've liked before for doing ink work. Um, it's honestly been a lot of time like a whole different lifetime since then for me that that's like maybe 10 or 12 years ago things were very different in my life then very <laughs> all right so i'm just kind of getting this placed up here i need to find my low tech tape Ooh, and my brushes are escaping okay so if you were joining me yesterday about my my rant about mermaid and whatnot, uh, what's going on, kind of like, I don't know, basically like a State of the Union address, but for my personal life as an artist. Um, yeah, that, that brush that I was boarding, <laughs> I was so upset about this brush tip that got really, really jacked up. It's, I haven't tried to heat it or anything, but... I did go ahead and look up what it costs, and that way I could just judge, like, is it worth the aggravation of trying to recover? And while I don't shop at Hobby Lobby for for personal reasons, um, I, I find there being problems of, like, basically you have to agree with them religiously as far as your healthcare coverage and your ability to access uh, you know, healthcare for yourself as a woman. Like, if you choose to have birth control, the insurance, if you're working as a Hobby Lobby employee, will not cover it. And they're allowed to do that. They are legally allowed. They want a lawsuit to do this. And that's just like, wait, what? Which means that you, as the employee, either you get to move to another job or just deal with having incomplete coverage for yourself as a woman. Like your, your right to women's health access is denied because of your employer's religious beliefs. And I don't think that's okay. And I won't think that that's okay because everyone is entitled to have their own religious beliefs. You shouldn't have to be the same religion as your employer or at least another religion that's going to, to jive with that in order to access your medical care. I have a big problem with that. So I do not shop at Hobby Lobby. That seems to be the only place where I could get a replacement brush. I know it is not where I got this brush to begin with because this has been, ooh, I don't know how long I, I've been someone who will not shop at Hobby Lobby for that reason. I, I'm at this point, I I don't have a date on it in my head. It's just, this is their, their ruling and this has been for at least the past decade. So 
I will not shop there. So this brush, to me, is not worth it as far as money-wise. Like, it's not like a, a $30 brush that I splurged on and I'm going to try my damnedest to go ahead and get that, that shape back. It's like $6 is a regular price. <laughs> I will find another brush. And I'm not going to replace it with the same brand, even though, like, the handle to brush ratio is, that is perfect when you're working in tight. But anyway, that's enough about this brush. And that's enough about Hoppy Lovey. They, they've had enough air, air time today. Um, I may actually dim one of my lights here. Just so I can see the understructure a little bit better. Yeah, you can see that line work start to pop through. It's easier when you don't have all that glare popping off the, the page in the foreground. So, uh, we have our line work underneath. And I'm just going to transfer that over. This low-tack tape is really low-tack. I currently have just one little strip up top. Um, I am debating just bringing some masking tape up here. Because, like, on my screen, I want to use the low-tack tape. But up at, at the top of the frame, I don't mind using masking tape. It's easy enough to, to clean any residue off with uh, rubbing alcohol, and I'm also going to trim this image down anyway, so it doesn't matter if masking tape would peel just that little scarce edge. Um, so, yeah, if you were with me yesterday about Mermay, then you understand that I'm breaking away from that challenge. I love the prompts, but it's too much time in a world that I don't absolutely love. I could do fairies and forest animals probably all day, every day, until the cows come home, kind of kind of scenario. You know, basically as long as my, my kids will let me go ahead and do my work. Um, but I was feeling a little too restricted as far as like use of mediums for the month. Uh, apparently I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I jived really well in the case of Wonderland to just like keep working on these prompts with watercolor. And in this case for Mermaid, it's, it was too much. Like the ink is giving me a lot of flexibility. Don't, don't get me wrong there. But my thing is that, um, I don't know, th there was more than I wanted to do. And I didn't feel like I was getting to everything that I want to do. Like, for example, this project, I wanted to have this project done about right before the start of this challenge. I was having issues getting ahead on Wonderland and then dealing with the mermaid challenges, you know, having the new frame and things set up. The, these things that I want to have as an artist streaming onto Twitch and then, uh, you know, also building my, my library of videos on YouTube. I, I like having these things. I like I said yesterday. I'm very, very much so uh, supporting the aesthetic that is in my head. So I, I work on the the, the frame surrounding uh, the the video streams, which I'm trying to kind of point at around the edge. Me and my my weird uh, look like digital, uh, I guess like scrapbooking files but those are fun for me to, to go and put together and I, I'd like to to create that world give you that vibe as you come here and you, you visit with me during the day I, I like to have that so because of, of very many elements um, you know I, I want to get to commission projects and things like that and for me it is a I don't want to give up doing streaming in general I'm actually having trouble seeing some of these lines still. I might need to bump this down a little more. Let's see if you guys can see the lines better too. My uh, my brightnesses are already at max on the on the tablet input, so that's as good as we're getting there. I have not done this in so long. I forget if I actually just need to be like right on top of it. I might just need to be right on top of it. I'm grabbing the reading glasses too, because I've realized as I'm getting a little bit older that sometimes things don't show up as well as I would hope for me. I'm glad that when I sketch this I'm 
pretty bold with a lot of my lines. Because I knew I would be transferring it. He's like, thank you, past me, making this a little bit easier. Alright. So anyways, here we are. That line missed. I'm trying to keep up with the smooth flow of some of these lines, but I also know that I am not always great with arcs, and I should actually be doing this a little bit lighter. Maybe I should try to go in with the graphic pencil. I know this guy likes to smudge a little bit. Great, so I'm sweating doing line work. I'm gonna take off my jacket. Just have this nice little house jacket my sister lent me while I was pregnant and I haven't returned yet. <laughs> she has stolen so much of my clothing too, so I don't feel bad about that. It's like, I love you, mouse. I was hoping that I was going to get this pencil work done last night, but that video that I was repairing from yesterday's stream was just uh, right there, tip of my brain. I didn't want to do anything creative until I had gotten that, that thing hammered out because, man, that was just occupying so much space in my head. So, yeah, I went ahead and started getting into that. Oh, I messed up that line. Okay. Well, I can see where this line's supposed to go, so that's good. Like, what? This paper is a touch more porous than the one that I used before. I don't, don't know how well you're seeing the, uh, the lines as I'm coming along here. I don't like that angle. I'm going to change that angle a little bit. This is the best time to go ahead and refine little things. Stuff that didn't jive quite as well as I had hoped. That was so weird. So I've been trying to figure out some of the things with my, my software. And I've noticed that it looks like that my software creates a copy of the this, this streamed video that goes out instead of just accepting the input from my camera and just saving a copy of that to the system while I am streaming. I can't say that I love that. So it looks like you guys can still see what I'm drawing, even if I'm going like that, so that's good. I'm trying to get better about my habits with, uh, with drawing angles, make sure that you can see what's going on. I'm pausing a lot to go ahead and reinforce those lines, make sure that they are where I want them to be. Um, this bone spur, I didn't... I think it needs a little bit more. It. I kind of like that um, the the knee and the elbows having this little little spur that sticks out. I feel like that would be an interesting defensive feature for a dragon to have. And I need to move my mic cord ever so slightly so I don't get it caught up on my little rolling cabinet. I have this nice little rolling cabinet that sits under my desk and is incredibly handy. Like, I was a little, little sad at first when I got this desk that I wasn't having any storage underneath, but what I've actually realized is that this worked out so much better for me. 
because if I had had a regular desk that just had like a file folder type storage drawers in it, then I would be running into, you know, the, the standard storage options, you know, I would just pile these shelves full of stuff. And instead, I have this like open sides rolling cart I can access, I can just reach under my desk and access from the side. Um, I can pull it out to go ahead and access what's in the very top of the, the rolling cart because the, the top is inset a little bit. Like, it's not a huge amount of depth in the top section, it's maybe like four inches. But that is freaking incredibly handy. I much prefer this and I, I am now happy that my desk did not have that. I'm, I'm actually losing a little bit of the detail coming up into the light here, so I'm gonna turn that just a touch see if that helps. I am a little bit afraid of leaning on this too much where the tape pops. So I need to keep checking and make sure that I have good alignment still. That, that's my fear with using this low-tech tape for the, the top sheet. So I'm just gonna be so busy leaning on there that I'll hit just enough pressure. I love these hands for this dragon. The hands and the feet. Um, so these are are definitely derivative for my childhood. Um, well, from my childhood. Uh, if you look closely at how I did the hands and the feet, you have these um, fine points. You know, each each joint comes down to a fine point and then curves back, and then you have the the curve for the the thumb or or the finger, or the, the claws, and uh, that is straight from my childhood. That is from very similar style to what they used in gargoyles. I can't even see this edge here. Might need to, to do this. That's the one downside to a light box if you have a lot of good light around your area. And actually, I'm breaking where these lines are exactly. That's okay. Yeah, some of this went off script. That's okay. Oh, I like that. I'll keep it. Alright, so hopefully <laughs> you guys are getting to see this pretty well. Um, I'm gonna do a little zoom in while I'm still in this area. Let's see if we can get in a little more. Uh, fracking autofocus, man. Alright, let me... I got a quarter by my desk. We're, we're gonna pop that on the screen. And hopefully that's giving my... my camera enough to just stay in focus with. Are you gonna stay put? Or am I too... Yeah, I'm too angled. Alright. Hey, let's see what else I have up here. I have other little things. This might have a bit more friction to it because it's plastic. It's a little lighter weight. Nope. What else can I use? Okay, that's still lined up pretty well. This tape does feel like it's slipping though. I don't like that. Alright, so... I'm trying to figure out what else I can do autofocus wise. I try just tapping on like an area that's already drawn. It should be able to just continue focusing on that. You would think it would be able to just re retain focus there because that area is not moving. Yeah, I I tried my damnedest last night to uh, go ahead and get this finished. And 
my brain was just, nope, you need to do that video and get that off your brain. Alright, I'm just gonna leave it as the ball. I definitely have stuff that's shifted. I don't like this. Is it the inside? That one's loose too. Uh, this is the worst when you're transferring your lines, so you're getting to see a bit of the bad with the good. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to re-stick that. Well, actually I'm probably going to move that in just a second. What I'm going to do is low-tech tape for my screen. So wait, all this is back in the area that is white. So I want the light behind all elements of my dragon. But what I'll do is I'll slide some masking tape with the sticky... Oh, you can't see any of that because I'm still zoomed in. Alright. So I can, I can tip the camera to hold it in place for a sec so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so there's the low-tech tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide at least a piece of masking tape in on this edge where the sticky side is facing up where I can stick it to the, the back of the other sheet. So like I said, I'm trimming it anyway. If masking tape decides it wants to start chewing some of my paper, yeah, well, it can chew my paper in the trash can. <laughs> well, not in the trash can, in the recycling. I, I do recycle. I am a nerd about that, even though um, our city, which has this lovely recycling program, and I'm not gonna... Uh, I'm not gonna point at them directly, but I guess you could see the video location. But uh, yeah, a lot of times when they send their, their trucks around to go ahead and collect stuff every week, they've kind of been only sending one truck. I don't like it. I keep putting my stuff, you know, still separating my stuff for the hopes of, you know, the days that they do bother to put our recycling truck out. Which sucks. Sucks a lot. I don't understand how systems can't be made more efficient for all of that. That, you know, recycling processes should be local instead of shipping stuff halfway around the world to other countries that decide to refuse our stuff because they don't want to deal with it. And that's fine. They shouldn't have to deal with it. It's our stuff. Alright, I'm going all like activist on you guys today. But, I mean... All industries should be doing this. This is this is better for your bottom line. If you can't get rid of the garbage, which I guess because they're not on the end user side, except for like as private citizens, like I don't know if you make companies somewhat responsible for how their products are handled when they are being discarded, then shit will actually get fixed. All right, I think. I think that is all lined up. I don't want to press down yet. I want to do the, the lift. I want a little freehand in a couple of spots, so this is taking an extra second to make sure everything's lined up right. So now you get to see the issues that you'll have. If you do want to use the light box, go ahead and transfer your stuff. Sometimes it's incredibly tedious. There's like the tiniest little shift in a couple spots. And I don't know if that was me getting a little loose with my lines. I mean, this is not a super detail oriented thing. Like, I don't have a ton of details here and there. I can just add a couple lines here and there and the composition's not going to be ruined, but I do want to take my time and at least make the attempt for things to be where they should be and not spend so much time guessing and freehanding. Boy, we're already at 24 minutes. I've had quite a ramble, huh? Um, yeah, so there's that.
Oh, don't, don't, don't do it to me. Yeah, I think everything's still straight. Uh, you remember that low tack tape that's holding it on the top sheet? Yeah, now there's some masking tape next to it. Yeah. And I have the tape from underneath the tracing page. So everything's all happy. And I have this nice, generous, probably like a two inch border around most of this. I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just eyeballing it. But that, that's here. Um, I'm just drinking my beverage for a moment, so I figure I'll pop that up. Alright, that's better. And as always, you are welcome to comment. I think I'm gonna miss my little octopus comment. <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll have to stick around. Oh, we'll see. I apologize uh, uh, in advance for anyone joining me today because the uh, the stream is a little bit more likely to be choppy because I did finally fix that video and YouTube is taking their sweet time with the upload, which it's it's not really them. It's probably my network. Unfortunately, I'm in a spot of the house that. It would be pretty damn difficult to run a hard lineup. So that's where I'm at on that. Um, yeah, back on with work. I'm trying to see like what lines are really buggered. I'm gonna adjust this curve, bring this a little bit closer. Alright, we got part of this curve here. You guys will have to let me know if this uh, is something that's interesting for you to watch. Um, I'm kind of on the fence. I have some some texture on the wings, and that's where, if I were doing this as like a watercolor wash, I would be looking at that to just do really subtle shading variation. But I feel like you don't really see a rib texture on the outside of the wings. You you really see that more on the inside. So as far as from like a line work stance. I don't know if I like that there. Oh man, I'm trying to block out the light. You can see my lines. Quality content, right? Hey, I I hope this is of use to you guys watching. But I feel like sometimes the challenges I have might not be so interesting. And you know, with this being a new channel, it's it's really interesting and seeing how much I'm I'm in my own head drawing anyway. But uh, it's also really interesting for me as far as just uh, working with with like zero feedback. This is something I'm trying to develop content for an audience when, you know, my channel's still new. I'm really getting more sketchy with these lines. This is probably not the best approach. But, um, yeah, so I'm trying to develop content that's interesting, but it's hard to do that without anybody saying, hey, this was incredibly useful, or hey, this was incredibly freaking boring. Like, please don't do that. <laughs> so, you know, if you do see things that you like, or even things that you don't like, please let me know. Because I can't learn if nobody says anything. I don't know, is that line even there? Yes, it is. Alright. 
but it looks janky because I'm probably not seeing all my lines correctly. So I'm more so re-sketching this thing instead of just transferring my lines. I'm sorry, but this is actually like really, really difficult for me to, to see on camera. I'm not going to do any more light box work on camera because I feel like you guys aren't seeing a whole lot. I don't know if this is a useful process for you. I don't know if I've even shaped that. And I am having a terrible time seeing my lines through. This paper's kind of springy. There's definitely moments where I'm seeing my lines pretty good. And then other times... I think next time I need to tape my sheet down on the edges too. Because I'm dealing with the, the little bit of like loft like press back because of the, the binding. I think that's where more part of my problem is coming from. Just simple little things that I probably could have changed, and I, I need even less light here. Everything at the top gets lost because of that other light casting glare. I can see that so much better right now. So between holding the paper down a bit more, and moving that light, that has made an incredible help. Maybe able to see my line would work better. So you can see that's that's already moving along a bit faster. Um, so if you're having issues, this will be helpful for you to go ahead and help troubleshoot. I know I put my hands all over this, but this is only going to be line work, so I don't have to deal with the same issues that I would if this were about, um, like washes. And there's a reason why I wanted to use this paper specifically too. Alright, so, yeah, this line coming down. Can you guys even see that? Is this interesting? Oh, you're seeing a lot of glare over my shoulder now. The light coming from my window. Alright, we'll just try to focus over there. Will you stay focused? No, you're not gonna stay focused. <sighs> yep, turning off the autofocus is not, not helpful. Like, can't you just focus on one thing, please? turning that feature off thinking like okay maybe it's just going to keep whatever focus it had and mm, if that's the case it decided to do garbage job I really do need to look through my camera and see if there's more there that I can that I can learn because when I'm doing up close stuff like this that makes a huge difference This is so broad. Realizing for really fine details, I'm starting to dislike this pencil more and more. Alright, 
Let me see if I'm missing features from below. Not. I am trying to improve this edge just a touch. Cross this way just a touch more. Which way I went with the pupils. Yeah, I went with the like cat's eye. The reptiles have a similar eye where it's just a slit for the pupil. So this line's not going to be followed exactly. When I do this in ink, I'm going to add slight bridges to the sides. Give this more the texture of like a like an antelope horn. I don't like how that line moved. So take two. I want these lines to be nice sweeping curves. Now you can see why I drew the neckline right through there. So it's gonna be fine. I feel like this one's a little bit skinnier. Just add an extra line thickness there. I do have a line for like the spine because I wasn't sure if I was gonna do spikes. I decided to do no spikes. In these I'm not following the drawing. I'm just coming back. I don't mind some things being sketched into place because that's going to keep the image. A little bit fresh, a little bit interesting for me in the line work. Alright, so this comes down this way. The thing is, this line is not going to be a straight line, even though that's the easiest I can pick it up from the line work underneath. But these scales actually lift up and they have texture and depth to themselves. It's just a lot of that's being kind of squished with this view. Um, I can't wait to get started on the Phoenix too. Um, yeah, like I said, that's- I'm not doing more line work on camera. This, I feel like, goes blurry far too easily. And that's probably boring as all hell. Like, I don't want my stuff to be boring. I want you to see the behind the scenes of, you know, the creation process. To me, that process is not boring. So I'm starting to redraw the uh, rest of the scales. Uh, creating that little bit of depth. Which means sketchy lines. Like, I can see them pretty clearly on, on the one side. Then there's like, just readjusting this edge so those details get a little bit lost this will be improved when i get my skinnier pencil i really need to get me like a point three 
I keep finding scenarios where where how the the edges of the pencil go like really make a difference to the quality of the line work that I'm doing. So that is something I will be fixing. I'll either I'll either pull out my really uncomfortable pencil. This metal body mechanical pencil. It, that is the right point size, but it is really uncomfortable to sit with. So I've been avoiding it for that reason. It's like, I don't know, maybe try a pencil grip for it. I don't even have pencil grips anymore. I haven't had pencil grips since high school. I just, you know, I just generally go for the feel of, like, a specific pencil in hand. For me, that's just generally what I've been gravitating towards, is, like, something that just feels comfortable off the bat. Like, this feels pretty comfortable. Um, I don't know, if I had to play with this for, like, hours every day, yeah, it might not be as comfortable. But um, it's got a, a decent bit of cushion and a good bit of grip to it, so I don't feel like I'm just going to drop the thing. I'm going to try to pick out the edges of these lines. I want to make sure that there is depth going on. Now I know that this is all going to be inked as like a flat line drawing, so what do you mean depth? But I mean, this will rely largely on things like um, some line weight. And what I want to do, I don't know if Amanda's gonna, gonna hop on in here, but I do want to do a series of these in foil with backgrounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna keep the, uh, the image in the back that we're using for this reference. I'm going to loosely transfer that onto watercolor paper. I'll probably just grab some carbon paper, honestly. And then just do some um, kind of abstract splotches. And then I'll do a foil version with that, that background. And I'll just merge the two in Photoshop before I send that off to the printer. She doesn't know this. It's a secret. <laughs> I like to do fun surprises for friends. Ooh, that skill is ridiculously off. Why did I draw that this far down here? Now we're gonna adjust the shape of this one. Because it goes way off the reservation to me. Like, did you break your belly scales, dude? You gotta be more careful. Yeah, so now I'm talking to my dragon drawing. Awesome. Because, you know, I don't sound like a crazy person enough. But, um, I don't know, I... I do feel better after our long talk from yesterday about Mermaid and projects and getting back on track. Like, there's a few long-term things that I have been stalled on, and I'm not completely caught up. But, like, do you ever just have a task that just gets put off longer and longer, and it feels worse? It feels so much worse the longer you put it off. And that's, that's definitely one thing that I've dealt with. Um... This is where the tail is kind of twisted a little bit and transitioning around. So I need to get rid of this line. A little, a little start of a line. But, um, yeah. Um, I had this weird thing about just not getting out to the post office. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. So I'm working so close to the bottom now. I'm probably slide it a little down here. Um, I'm just about done with the, the line work. I, I need to put in our flames and the rest of the tail, so. I think we're in a 
good spot as far as today. Like, I don't want to end the stream early because I like having it go an hour long, but at the same time it's kind of like, okay, so what are you going to do? Watch me put away my tablet for like five minutes. <laughs> like, let's not do that. I might, as much as I don't want to do more line work on screen, it might be more logical for me to just pop on the phoenix and go ahead and get that process started. I really like this tail design. It's like barbed heart thing. And hopefully this gives you a really wonderful like S curve and then the tail brings you back around, uh, putting you back your, your mind back on the focal. And then you have the mountains coming up and the clouds coming down and it all, all leads you right into the middle. So that's that's the thought process behind the composition. No. No no. If things go the way I think they will now, with me like using this time, getting caught up on commissions and other pieces that I want to work on. Um you know, like I said, I will still hit a lot of the, the mermaid prompts because I'm not I'm not done with that challenge. Like I feel it's still a challenge there that still exists and I still want to get to a lot of it with like summertime. For me is like prime time for, for mermaids. You know, like early spring, just getting into summer, I think of the woods. Like that's that's my happy place. I love to be around some trees. Go ahead and dip my toes in the stream, find some moss to walk on because moss texture on your feet is freaking amazing. So yeah, I'll I'll be looking for a new park where I can do that, because there was a park that I went to as a kid and I don't I don't remember the name of it because I was just I didn't keep track of that stuff when I was real little. But you have places like Jim Thorpe that is not that far from where I'm at. Like, I mean, it's a drive, but it's also not an impossible drive. And stuff like that would be fun. Um, though, if I'm going out somewhere like that, that that's a day that the stream's not going to happen. Maybe I'll just do a random live video from on the spot. But uh, it's interesting to think of, you know, the potential. And to move to a place where, like, not like physically move, I'm not moving, but I, but I mean like just this new chapter, I, I kind of feel like things have just opened up a little bit for me, mentally. And, you know, I need to take care of myself a bit, and hopefully you guys are interested in this adventure and where it's taking me. I am certainly glad to have you along if you're interested. Consent is a big thing. <laughs> like, only if you're interested. Like, if you're not interested, you know, cool. Do you. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we have about 10 minutes left. Oh, I need to put the flames on my little, little ball of energy here. I don't know why, for me, both of these prompts needed a little bit of fire. And I think that goes back to, you know, fire traditionally being a creative force. As much as it could be a destructive force. But, uh, yeah, I don't really have lines there. So, I'm just kind of freehanding a shape. Which doesn't matter if I go ahead and bring some, some light down. Go ahead and our lights back up so I'm not really relying on the uh, the board now you can focus just on the image whoa that is so much brighter um yeah so let's let's just get some energy on this little ball here I don't want to distort too much of the background of it I also don't want to have lines going all the way to the 
front. I'm trying to picture how this is going to look when I line it with the uh, ink. I'm going to be really gentle with that side. I want it to have enough form that you can tell that the center is a ball. I might actually go ahead and take it off of the sheet now. Or I can do that. I'm going to turn that off. How's that look? Oh. Yeah, that's the... my screen going dark is the uh, USB input that you heard. Um, yeah, I don't like... I don't quite like how this line is going, so I'm going to... pop it off of this. I want to look at this directly. Gently. Gently. Alright, now that's off. Now this is bending. Stay down. Sit. Stay. I don't know if my dragon's gonna listen to me. Alright. I kinda like some of the, the shape I was getting out of this, so I wanted to bring this over here. Because I got real light with my lines. I'm not seeing those through the light box. Calling it a light box, but it's, it's a very expensive light box, um, comparatively. Um, it's not a light box. Um, you can do. Go ahead and put that in. I'm gonna come in here with my finest tipped pen marker. I'm not sure exactly what I'm lining this with. I just know I wanted to do line work. Because for me, sometimes doing line work is the best option. Not sure I like that. I'm going to tap off some of the extra graphite and see if I like where this is at. I'm only doing that with this section because this section is so abstract. Maybe some of this needs to come off of this edge here. A little bit up here, a little bit down, a little bit over here. This comes down a little bit. And just a little touch of a line there. I think I like it. I want to make sure that I have like some really fine lines and I would love to do a variety of of lines there, but to go ahead and make this able to convert to a foil file, it needs to be, you know, I, I would need line work that I can go ahead and knock down to black. Because that's what the printers would need for a file, so that's why I gotta, I gotta take a minute to, to decide on that. And just giving this a final once over. I think I might have softened this too much. I'm slightly stronger there. Just the little ghost of a line here. That'll help make this seem a little bit more dimensional when I go to do the line work. Just looking for other little moments like that. Like these scales will be a little bit better when I'm working on them in line work because what I'll do is I'll follow where this ridge goes from the outside edge, instead of following the, uh, the the overall shape of the neck. You see some of these have like pretty good dimension. I, I corrected as I went, but up here, I let that get kind of lost, and that's just to speed up the line work process here. For me, it's like, yes, the main design elements were already resolved, that's what you transferred over. Oh, I didn't put my, uh, my clouds back in. Hmm. I forgot to do that. This head shape is doing something weird too. Bring that up just a touch. Just 
See, this is why we, we go ahead and give it a moment to uh, just sit with it and observe. I like this ridge being here. There's a little bit of um, curvature for the other eye. I, I'm debating having a little line to imply some more depth there. But for me, the shape of the head is such a touchy thing. I am not someone who's drawn dragons. Like, I've looked at a lot of dragon art. Uh, John Howe especially. Freaking amazing artist. Um, Ars Vallejo. Julie Bell. Other amazing artists. Um, um, liking um, Stephanie Law. She has some fantastic fantasy watercolor. Uh, if you're looking for, for some stuff to to take a look at. Um, th there are so many other artists and I'm, I'm blanking on names right now. I could, I could probably just print out a giant list. But yeah, um, I don't know where that train of thought was going. <laughs> I need to, to go ahead and put these clouds in. I feel like I want to go oh, maybe something a little bit more stylistic. Right now I just kind of have ho-hum clouds. Like, these would have been the same type of clouds I would have been drawing back in grade school. I don't know. I, I think maybe I'll leave the clouds off for now. And I'll, I'll make up my mind about them later. But, as far as where we're at with line work... I think I'm happy. This line doesn't quite meet. I'll go ahead and ever so slightly shift that over. There we go. Yeah, I think we're in a good spot. Um, basically, I no matter where I got with this, I was kind of going to stop here because I'm going to want to do the Phoenix line work too. That is. Something that'll take a little bit of time. Just adjusting this tip here where it looks like the you know, skin actually grew up over this. I want one to curve down, the other one kind of curves in. This one seems short. That's better. All right. The fiddly little things before I, uh, I go ahead and ink. So, my plan for tomorrow is to ink this beastie. I think that'll be fun. I think that'll go fairly well and be interesting. Uh, probably a lot more interesting than watching me fumble around with trying to do the line work, even with a light box. <laughs> But uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying the uh, the new take. Um, this line could probably be a little bit stronger here, and I feel like yeah, I feel like maybe you would see part of the back of the dragon through here. All right, that's enough fiddling. I think I am done with my fiddling. So that'll be fun. Um, I might sharpen or change up here a little bit because that still still stands out as slightly odd. I think once I have the actual nib loaded up and I can do some line variation, this will be able to be like really fine coming down here and then going a little bit stronger through this part of the face. I think it's good though. I'm I'm gonna leave it alone. And we're at the end of the stream anyway. So hopefully you've enjoyed seeing behind the scenes what's on my workbench and getting to to be here for a good chunk of the process. Uh, working on, on this though has made me think like 
maybe cons in the future. I do miss having a booth set up. I used to, uh, to do a booth at, at some fairs for a polymer clay sculpture, and at the time I wasn't doing quite so much drawing where I wanted to have prints with me. Uh, prints were just not ideal for the weather situations that I was dealing with. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't like Wyoming. Wyoming, it's like, it never stops being windy. How do people do anything in Wyoming? It, that was a, a unique living experience, but that's a story for another day. Um, so I do want to thank you so much for joining me today, and definitely looking forward to having you here tomorrow and getting some ink on the page because the ink work is is the best stuff and i'll i'll have decided what what ink i'm working with i want it to be interesting for people getting plain line prints and i want it to be easy enough that i can convert it to black line for those those sticky sneaky foil prints that i'm considering so um, yeah. Yeah, so that's where I'm at, and, you know, keep on painting, and drawing, and sketching, and inking, and all the fun good stuff. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.